Lord, you are worthy of our praise. Lord, you are worthy of our praise.
abiding place. Chef, what joy to find that I am Jesus, says, and He is mine. With blessedness, what be so free that I'm in Jesus and He's in me. Hey. Fellowship, what joy to find that I am Jesus, says, and He is mine. What blessedness, what peace so free that I'm in Jesus and He's in me. Hey. It's a great, great joy, and it's a great, great peace. Oh, it's a piece of full fruit, so righteous.
Yes, I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. 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 Love of God, how rich, how pure. This 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 love of God. Everlasting love from an everlasting God. Everlasting love from the everlasting God. Everlasting love from the everlasting God. Everlasting love from the everlasting God. It's everlasting love. Everlasting God And I'm leaning on the everlasting arms Yes, I'm leaning on the everlasting arms Yes, I'm leaning on the everlasting Yes, I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. 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 I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. Yes, I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. Yes, I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. Yes, I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. I'm leaning on the everlasting arms.
Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with more of you. That I may love as you love and do as you would do. Breathe on me, breath of God. For I am holy thine, and no riches of earth could ever compare to your glory so divine. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with more of you. That I may love as you love and do as you would do. Breathe on me, breath of God. For I am holy thine. No riches of earth could ever compare to your glory so divine. Just breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with more of you. That I may love as you love. me breath of God, for I am holy thine, no riches of earth could ever compare to your glory so Breathe on me. 
that the wind of your spirit, the tempest of heaven now blow. Let the wind of your spirit, the tempest of heaven now blow. Let the wind of your spirit, the tempest of heaven Father, tonight is your night. Father, we're here for one purpose, and that is to meet with you. I thank you for your presence, Holy Spirit, in this place. Hallelujah. Are you happy tonight? Good. It's a fun thing to be saved. It's a very fun thing to be saved. It is a very happy thing to be saved. Jesus loves us. He loves us so much. It's amazing. Hallelujah. I see a lot of happy faces. That's good. If you're not happy, I'm going to assume tonight that you're not saved. And we'll minister you to you accordingly. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you so much. Everybody say with me tonight, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I thank you that you come and you speak to me. Father. I'm here to hear your voice. Instruct me tonight. Speak to me tonight. Change me tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It is wonderful to be in the house of God. It is wonderful to be a, a child of the living God appointed and ordained to be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I have one assignment tonight, and that is to host the presence of the Holy Ghost, to host the Lord Jesus, that he be in this place. I have nothing to offer you. I'm sorry. I might at best be able to tell a funny joke and get a giggle out of you, and that will do you no good. So I want to... Communicate the power of Jesus Christ. And I'm only going to be able to do that if I follow the Holy Ghost. Oh, God is so good. God is so good. It's fun, too. <laughs> it's good not to feel any pressure. I don't feel any pressure here tonight. Doing things under pressure never works out. I'm sure some of you have tried. I love when Pastor Mark talks about trying to golf under pressure. I've been an eyewitness. It's a terrible thing. But it's good. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 How many people in here tonight have ministered in some facet or another? Some sort of ministry. Okay, good portion of you. Good portion of you. It's easy to come under the pressure of 
you know, saying the right thing, performing, making sure you don't let God down, right? Learning how to flow, learning how to flow with the Spirit, learning how to flow with the Holy Ghost to communicate those things that He wants to say. You might, you might think, oh, yeah, yeah, I can do it. I, don't, I won't feel the pressure of it. You know, I can get up there. I can just flow. Pastor Mark does it. I can do it. I can flow. I'll share a funny example with you real quick, and then we're going to get into, well, I don't know what we'll do, but we'll, we'll see. I was at a golf tournament for my company, and um, we just were, you know, we're on teams, and we played scrambling, so at the end of it, there was a, a hole-in-one shot for $100,000. So I was, I was playing pretty good. My team's like, you got to go do this shot. And it was a certain distance, and it was on that day for me. I'm like, okay, awesome. This will be easy. I can do it. I can at least get close, because they had like a, you know, Runner-up prize, you got close. I'm like, I'll easily get close. And I stepped up. Everything was going good. And as soon as I got back, it's like $100,000 hit me. I was like, oh, no. And I chunked. And it was the worst shot I've had in a long, long time. Because all of a sudden, the concept of, oh, yeah, I could do that. You watch the golfers play. Yeah, they're swinging for, for a million dollars or whatever. It can't be that hard. Well, the pressure hits. And it's like, oh, wow, this is what it feels like. I don't know why I'm telling you this, but there's got to be a reason. I think the reason that I'm telling you is we too often think of our own ability. We too often look to ourselves and we kind of project, oh, well, what would I do in that situation? I could do that. But then you get in the situation, you get in the time where it's like, okay, do you have the goods? Can you really, can you really minister? Can you really swing? And it's like, uh-oh, the pressure of it's a little overwhelming. So maybe I think that I'm saying this tonight to tell you that as a little bit of a precursor to what we're saying tonight, what the Holy Ghost is going to minister. You don't want to get stuck in what you think you can do. You want to go ahead and get out in the middle of what God's doing. You want to go ahead and get under that pressure of it, feel it a little bit, and then give it to the Lord. Say, Father, I don't, obviously I don't have the skills. I don't have the ability to do it. I want to learn how to rely on you for everything. Everything that we say, every single thing that we speak, everything that we minister, it's essential that we do it by the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, it's just our own human ability. And we can all look around and see what we've accomplished. And when you lay it out, it's not all that impressive. Okay? So you want to recognize, first, first and foremost, hey, be honest with yourself. What can I, as a person, my own human ability to provide? Not much, but what can the Holy Ghost, what can the Heavenly Father provide? Everything, the solution to everything, the realms of the miraculous. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Wonderful Father. Well, Pastor Mark is on his way to... Uh, to learn. He's going to be doing some stuff specifically for, it's not because he wants to get more knowledge. It's not because he has some great aspirations to, uh, to breed amazing cows and do all this other sort of stuff. He's learning embryo transfer. It's some pretty cool stuff. It's complicated stuff. Um, but the reason he's doing it is for the kingdom of God. So let me talk about the mission training center a little bit. This is important to remind you guys, keep this thing in front of you always because it is something that is huge in my heart something that God has birthed in me and something that, you know, uh, Pastor Mark is really blazing the way, blazing the trail in. And it's something that each and every one of us want to be able to participate in because it really is a step and a place in missions that is, is radical. It's going to last until Jesus comes. So the Mission Training Center is a, is a piece of property that has been dedicated up in Oregon to facilitate things that we're going to do with animal husbandry and horticulture, uh, things that we're going to do in fisheries. And really, it's going to be, it is, and it will continue to grow to be a training ground for missionaries to instruct missionaries how to learn skill sets, to be able to grow food, provide food, and preach the gospel, understanding basic business principles to, to go back to their, their home countries, set these things up, and have sustainable ways of living, uh, providing food and preaching the gospel. So it's a radical, radical concept. It's cutting edge, and it's something that God is continually just blessing us with. The, there's a, a number of different um, ventures and things that God's put in our hand to do, and you look at it, and there wouldn't necessarily uh, appear to be the immediate success and the immediate growth. Uh, but this, what has been taking place on the Mission Training Center, God has just breathed on it. God has just blessed it. It's been explosive. It's above and beyond what we can, could have ever, ever expected, and, it, and it's only getting better. So I'm telling you all of this to remind you of what's going on, things that we're doing in missions, and invite you to participate with it uh, because... We need a lot of help. There's a lot to do. If you have a heart for missions, if you have a heart for the mission field, make sure that you get involved. Make sure that you understand what is taking place and you continually participate in prayer. 
uh, in finances and labor. And we're getting ready to come into the, uh, the spring and uh, summer months. And there will be much labor to do. So if you're interested in participating, coming, if you have a skill set uh, of swinging a hammer or, or building or just digging, if you, can, if you can run a shovel, I can use you. Okay. If you can't, if you've never grasped a shovel before, just maybe consecrate a day and say, Lord, I'm going to work today and everything that I make in terms of my dollar bills is going to go to the, the Mission Training Center because that might be more helpful. Okay. So I want you to prepare an offering right now. If what I have spoken to you has stirred your heart for the Mission Training Center, I want you to give. I also want you to always have a, a tithe or an offering to bring to the house of the Lord. We want to always worship the Lord with our giving, not because we need to pay the bills are not because we have any other reason, but it is a opportunity for you to come and just pour out your heart before the Lord, pour out your offering before him. I love what Pastor Mark said last week. He said, people will ask, well, what are, we, what are you going to do with the offering? Where, where's all the money going? We're going to burn it. It's going to be a living sacrifice. It's going to go on the altar and it's going to be offered up. So hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the faith that you've put in our heart to participate in giving. I thank you for for radical multiplication. Father, for a blessing on every sower, a blessing on every giver in Jesus' mighty name. For great increase, for great multiplication. Father, I thank you for every person in here that has diligently given themselves to business for the kingdom. Father, that they have diligently given themselves to step into a new realm, a new place in faith where they see miraculous finances, miraculous wealth, Come into the kingdom of God, not for our own personal gain, but, Father, for the advancement of the kingdom of God, for the advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the earth. Father, we need your signs and your wonders. Father, we need your miracles to take place on this earth today like never before. Father, I thank you that you give us a realization of the time that we live in. Father, the desperate need to be able to preach your gospel with mighty signs and wonders. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the understanding for the outpouring of the authority that you have given us as believers, the authority that you have given us to go everywhere executing your will on the earth today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you have an offering prepared, come and give. If you need another minute, finish up, and then come and give. Lord Jesus, we love you. Father, you're so wonderful, you're so wonderful, you're so wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus. I want everybody to just pray with me for a minute. We're just going to pray. We're just going to invite the Holy Ghost to come and minister to us tonight. We want an atmosphere of faith in this place tonight an atmosphere that is prepared and ready to receive. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that every ear be ready to hear, every heart be ready to receive. Father, we turn our attention, we turn our affection, we turn everything of our lives over to you right now. Holy Spirit, I ask that you find in this place a desperate hunger for you. I ask you that you find in this place, Father, your people that are seeking after you. Father, no other purpose, no other agenda, but just to feel your presence, just to touch heaven, to be stirred up. Father, to touch heaven so that we can communicate heaven. Father, to be able to understand who you are so that we may give people an understanding. Lord Jesus, to be your ministers. Father, to be those that worship you. Father, those that bring you praise, that bring you honor, that bring you glory. Father, this is the purpose of our life. Thank you. Thank you, mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> thank you, Father, for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Father, thank you for the gift of tongues that you placed in your church. Father, I thank you that no one would be ashamed of tongues, but they would be very proud of it. Father, for it is the way that you decided to, to outpour out the Holy Ghost, the language of the Spirit, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost in fire, to speak 
into the realms of the Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, something I've been ministering to the, the little guys in, in kids' church and then the youth as well is creating atmospheres in your life. Learning how to recognize an atmosphere, learning how to feel, you know, be sensitive to, to feel what's going on, and then changing it if necessary. If you're under an atmosphere of uh, depression, of something, you know, maybe you're upset, there's a stressful situation, being able to recognize that and changing it. Being consecrated to keep the atmosphere of your life a place of praise, a place of thanksgiving, where prayer flows out, where someone can walk into your office, they can walk into your atmosphere, wherever that may be, and they can feel it, they can feel it. I slept in a room, <laughs> I slept in a room at my parents' house a few weeks ago, and I slept like, I slept amazing. I was like, mom, what's up with that room up there? I was like, I haven't slept that good in a long time. And my dad's like, oh, that's her prayer closet. I was like, oh, <laughs> it was good. It's good, I visit that room often. There's an atmosphere that has been created in there. That's the place where she goes and heaven is communicated. It's wild to think about that the realms of heaven can be communicated to us here in this, in this earthly realm. You want to have a place in your life where every single day you touch that realm of heaven. You access that place. You know how to create an atmosphere. What I'm going to talk to you about, about tonight, I think, is, is your roles and your responsibilities. The authority that you have to create an atmosphere. The authority that you've been given as a child of God. I've been going through and I've been, I've been studying the, the red book of the, of the kingdom again. How many of you guys have read this? Has everybody read this? Let me, if, if at any point you have read this, I need to see your hand right now. Raise it loud and proud, high. Okay, that is way too few. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to go through this. I'm going to give you kind of the, the uh, spark notes of it. And you're going to get encouraged to read this. This is a book that will change your life. It is radical. It is radical. You guys have got to, got to know this. If this was the only book you had for the rest of your life, there's just, it's just scripture. Okay, Pastor Mark writes in a really, really easy way to, to read. And um, it's just scripture. This, uh, honestly, um, well, let me talk about it a little bit, I guess. It was like a third of the people raised their hand. Okay, so... How many people know that we were blessed, God used us to go to Nepal, held a, a um, crusade in the national stadium, and really God gave us a nation, okay? It was amazing. We were able to go in, uh, the door opened up, Pastor Mark and Pastor Ann went in there, and ra was it radical? Signs and wonders. There's, the cool thing about this one, too, is for you guys that need pictures, this thing's loaded with pictures, okay? So you can see what it looks like to, um, to be a believer, the unlimited authority of God. Now nothing is impossible. You can see what that looks like. There's even pictures for it. Okay, so God blessed us to go into uh, to Nepal, and Pastor Mark did a, a leadership conference, and he basically just laid out for the Bible College and for some of the other uh, people what it looked like, what it looked like to be a son of God, what that what that sounded like, the scriptures behind it, and these are just his notes from it. Okay, and it's really cool, and so that's what I'm going to go through tonight, and. Um, Hopefully, you'll be encouraged and stirred up. If you are a youth member in this church, you will read this book. How many of my youth do I have here tonight? Let's see your hands. Woo! Looking good. How many of you guys have read the book? Most all of you. Good. Praise God. Who in my youth group has not read this book? Okay. Read it. You got to read it. Okay. You have, you can get through it. I just read it again. Um... I think it took me a grand total of like three hours reading straight, reading slow. It's pretty easy. Let me see. It's 119 pages. So you can get through it in a week, no problem. I'll give you two weeks. But if you're in the youth, you have to read that and study it out for next time we meet. Okay? Cool. Moving on. 
So the rest of you, I don't know what you're going to do. So I would encourage, and I hope that you would read it. You might take the advice, but those guys, I get to hold accountable. So it makes it fun. But if I don't do it, I got to whack them. Okay, Father, you're so wonderful. You're so good. So let me get into this a little bit and, uh, and help you understand who you are. How many of you guys have a job? You work somewhere, you have some sort of job, okay? I would hope at that job you have a role and a responsibility. You know what you're supposed to do. You don't just come into work and you mindlessly, blindly wander around and uh, wait for somebody to give you a task. There are companies that operate that way. They don't last long, okay? So as the people of God, we need to understand what our role, what our responsibility is, what our assignment from heaven is. What has Jesus told us to do? What is it that we're supposed to do in this Christian walk? It's essential that we know these things. So tonight, by the help and the grace of God, I'm going I'm to communicate a few of the key points to you and stir you up to study out these things and more importantly, live out these things because there is an opportunity like never before to go into all the world and preach the gospel. There are people that are desperate, that are hungry, that are hurting, that are just looking for, looking for something that is real. So I want you to start. We're going to look at Mark 16, verse 15. What does the Lord laid out as your job description? It's pretty simple. He makes it pretty clear cut. We're actually going to read all the way through verse 20, but we'll start here in verse 16. And he said to them, Go into all the world, pro proclaim the gospel. To all creation. And the ones believing will be baptized, that are baptized will be saved, but the one not believing will be, be condemned. Do we have a King James? Do you have a King James there? I don't know which one that is. I want to read this. Give me a second. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, this is Jesus talking, they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Anybody get a job description out of that? It's what God said to do. Go into all the world and preach. And these are the things that he's going to do for us. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about, the first kind of title, and it's actually the first chapter in the book, is the authority of the kingdom. The authority of the kingdom of God. What is God's kingdom? What does that look like? Who's there? Who participates? Who gets to participate? The authority of the kingdom of God is established. Father stepped onto the scene, and he showed men throughout the Old Testament what it looked like to be a part of his kingdom. He demonstrated to Abraham what his kingdom would be like, and he told Abraham, your seed will be like the stars of the heaven, infinitely vast. He invited Abraham to come and participate with his kingdom. He showed Abraham that his kingdom was above all. His kingdom had total dominance over every kingdom of this world, the kingdom of darkness, and he invited him in to participate. So we get to grab a hold of, as we study out this first section, the, the authority of the kingdom is that we're on God's side. Pastor Mark opens up the book and talks about if, a natural king, if, if he needs something, if there's an area to go and conquer, he knows that he has the resources. He doesn't have to second guess. He knows what his kingdom is. He knows, he knows the authority that he, that he has as the king to call on his army, to call on his treasury, whatever it is. And he moves out of that authority. Father has invited us as part of his children, as part of the kingdom of God, to understand this authority that we have been given, to understand this gifting that he has placed in our lives to move accordingly and to move with radical, radical faith. I mean, obviously, these things are not something that can be done in a natural realm. These are things that are, are only done out of a spiritual realm. So grabbing a hold of and understanding, first and foremost, this is something that you only get to participate in if you have been brought into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of the dear son. God's looking for someone that'll just believe him. Someone that will take a hold of a childlike faith and just understand, yes, if I will get a hold of this authority of the kingdom of God, I can and will see the gospel spread throughout, throughout the ages. And understanding that he's there. You can trust him. 
Some people have trust issues, right? Oh, well, I prayed this once, and I thought that the authority of the kingdom was with me, and it didn't happen. That wasn't God's fault. That was your fault. You did, you did something wrong. So don't act like God's the one that's coming up short. Don't have a trust issue. Trust fully in who you are in God as a part of his kingdom and watch radical, radical displays of the kingdom. Look, I've prayed for many people and they didn't get healed. I've moved out and things and it just, it was, it was honestly kind of a flop. Was that God? No. Something I did, I don't know what it was. But I know who I am. I know that I'm moving with the authority of the kingdom and by the help and the grace of God that will be radically communicated. And as we engage in it more as, what's the key word for this year? Yeah, as we participate, God was God is there. God is there to, to increase, to always increase. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to go to John 14, 12. I know you guys know these scriptures. I'm reminding you of them. That's my job. I know that we are, as human beings, forgetful people. And so... Praise God for the Holy Spirit who is always putting these things in our remembrance. And for pastors, apostles, teachers, prophets, evangelists, always there in front of us to remind us of these things and to encourage. John 14, verse 12. One of the things that's absolutely essential to this Getting a revelation of what it is that God wants to, to, to pour out is an urgency. You're not going to have a revelation of it until you understand the urgency of it, until you get into the, the scrap of it and see. It's very easy to go from you know, your house to your job back home and, and to church and have this, this bubble that you live in and to be completely disconnected from what's going on in the world around you. But if you step out to begin to minister, if you step out and, and, and start looking let the Lord direct you and lead you, open up your eyes, you begin to get a sense of urgency, the urgency of the time that we live in right now. There's some crazy stuff going on. You, it doesn't take much. You just look at, turn on the news or just open up a, a newspaper, whatever it is, you can see that the world is not in a very good state. The United States is taking up some weird positions. There is an urgency. There is a desperate need for the kingdom of God to be revealed. Father wants to communicate. Father wants to reveal his kingdom. He's looking for somebody who will say, yes, I'm a part of the kingdom of God. These are the things we stand for. These are the things that we do. But in order to have that revelation, you've got to have an urgency. You've got to have understanding what is going on. We are the answer. We're the answer to a lost and dying world. Father realizes that there is a serious deficiency on the earth today, and he's looking for somebody that can participate. I know each and every one of you in here, you want to volunteer, you want to help, but there's a greater level of participation that's required. That's just, that's where the rubber meets the road. It goes from a concept of, yeah, that sounds really cool, to, okay, it's time to get busy, it's time to do the work, it's time to participate with the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God has come. The kingdom of God is here. Jesus told, told us that. When, he's, when he came, he fulfilled that. Now it's time for us to get a hold of that. What does that look like? Where do, what is our role in that? How do we participate with that? Jesus showed us he's the king of kings. We are now to take his place on the earth and execute his will. It's radical. Jesus came. He said, okay, here's the kingdom. Look what I'm doing. Lived out the life. Showed us how to be victorious. And he now said, okay, you go. You do it. Now in John 14, verse 12. Let's read this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he also, and greater works than these, shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. It makes it so easy. It makes it so easy. So this first part, this first section, just what is the kingdom? Understanding the kingdom of God is at hand. The Father stepped in the kingdom of men and proved that all powers are subject to him. There was nothing. Jesus showed there was nothing. There was no demon that he encountered. There was no sickness that he encountered, no temptation, no sin that was able to overcome him. He stepped in and showed, yep, I am the king of kings. I am the sovereign Lord. 
he conquered, he defeated death, hell, and the grave, right? And he now said, this is the kingdom of God. Come and participate. It's wonderful. So here's another example. I got to share this one too from the book. Pastor Mark opens, it's the first couple paragraphs in the intro. He talks about a policeman, okay? There's a policeman with an identity crisis, is what it is. The guy's got his training, he's got his uniform, he's got his badge, but he doesn't believe he has any authority. It's a pitiful sight, okay? Think of this guy, this policeman all dressed up, he's ready for work, he goes out, but he doesn't believe he has any authority to stop the criminals. He doesn't believe he has any authority to write a ticket for somebody that's breaking the law. He's a lost guy. Now, ask yourself, if we were to use that example for the Christian, do you have the right clothes on? You got the badge, but you're not executing your job? You're not doing what you're doing? Look, I'm guilty of it. I will be the first to admit I can be a little clueless when it comes to getting stuff done, going from one place to another. There's a lot of time I know I've missed many opportunities to do my job as a representative of the kingdom. I'm getting better at it, praise the Lord. I'm able to see, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do right now. I'm supposed to bring healing to this situation. This person is here to receive something from me, something that I have. Look, there is nothing more exciting. There is nothing more fun than being able to have someone come to you that is completely broken and you, by the ministry of Jesus Christ, completely see, and you see them completely restored. It's radical. Has anybody encountered that? Has anybody been able to participate that, with that? I said this morning, the presence of, a, of God is addicting. That is addicting. To see a life completely transformed. It's beautiful. The overwhelming love, the overwhelming compassion that you get. Oh my goodness, it's awesome. So what I want to do is encourage you, hopefully by the help and the grace of God, Holy Spirit, minister this to your people. Don't be a policeman without any identity, without any ability to know what you're doing. Don't be a Christian that is not living out the life of Jesus because it's so easy to think, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, I go to church. No, that's not it. A Christian living the life of Jesus is what? Doing what he did. Jesus didn't pass by anybody that called on him. He didn't turn any away anyone that needed him. He was the solution. He was the answer. We want to get a hold of that. If you truly get your identity in Christ Jesus, you'll never pass by someone that is in need and turn them away. Because you realize I have the answer. I have the answer because I have Jesus, right? It just, that's the breakthrough right there. That's the, that's the, it. when you will finally accept who you are in Christ Jesus, when you will finally believe, oh yeah, I truly have the answer. By the Holy Ghost, we truly are able to supply everything that everyone needs. Think about it. There is not any issue that is going on with anyone mentally, physically, or spiritually that Jesus Christ cannot heal. There is no problem that he cannot fix. Okay? I think about this. I was at um, Chick-fil-A last week, and this little girl, she was in this crazy walker. I shared this with the youth and she had like this weird stuff on her head and she was just, I don't know what her, I don't know what her, her issue was, but I just got overwhelmed. She, I just saw her out of the corner of my eyes. She walked, she walked out one door as I was walking in and I was just like, Lord Jesus, to see the miracles take place, the radical demonstration of the Holy Ghost, to be able to walk up to that little girl and see her, her body completely changed. That stuff moves me, man. I, that stuff breaks me. Like that is what I want. I am desperate for that. I'm desperate to see the outpouring of the miracles of God like that. that. That changes. That's what Jesus did. That's how Jesus ministered. He went everywhere with radical demonstration of his love, of his compassion, and the miracles. I bring this before the Father daily. I'm seeking it. Pastor Mark ministered uh, last week about asking, seeking, knocking. What is it? You have to ask yourself, what is it that you are passionate enough about? What you, you remember every day to bring before the Father and say, Father, I need this. Father, I want this to be going on in my life. If you're not, you've got to get your eyes open. You've got to get serious about your identity because clearly you have your uniform and your badge, but no direction. We want to see every person in this life in this, in this place, fulfill the direction, the purpose of their life. That's what Father wants. I want it, and you can multiply that times infinity. That's what Father wants. I truly believe that Father placed me on the earth 
right now for this day, for this time. I have to be willing to participate with what it is that I'm supposed to be doing. If I'm not, I'm going to, I'm, I'm blowing it. Now that rings true for every single person in here. We have a purpose for this day and for this time. Are we aware of it? Are we willing to be honest with ourselves? Are we willing to confront ourselves and say, you know what, I'm living for myself. I'm doing the things that are, are just for my own existence. You want to push that aside. I've been going back through and reading Matthew 5, 6, and 7, just reading it every day, reading it every day. It's a radical, radical section of chapters. Get a hold of this. Guys, we just, we got to get hungry. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you that you stir up hunger in our lives. Father, that this not just be concept, this not just be ideas, but this be the purpose of our life. Father, that this be who we are. Father, our existence, everything about our lives be with you. Father, there is, there's no point in just talking about these things if we're not going to get a hold of them. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you stir up passion in our hearts to get a hold of this, that it be real. Father, that it be so real to us, that it not be a fairy tale, that it not be some just distant idea, but, Father, that it would begin to be the reality of our lives, who we are, who we are in you, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you for a revelation of the authority that you have given us, the authority of the kingdom the authority to go in to the places that Satan would claim and break his power to smash all of his work and to claim it for the kingdom of God. This is, this is what Jesus is telling us. This is what the Father is, is trying to communicate to us. He's saying, hey, representative, you have the authority to go in to these places and conquest, completely demolish everything that is of the realms of darkness and take it for the kingdom of God. There's a battle. There is a war. Maybe you're asking yourself as I'm talking about this right now, well, what is the point of having authority? Well, let me tell you, there's a war going on. There is a battle going on. If you haven't engaged in it, I would invite you to come because we could use some help. Because it would look from just about any standpoint that Satan is doing a lot better job. The story that Pastor Mark shares of Japan is radical. It's radical to me. He's up there on that high hotel, whatever room it was, the 30-something floor, and he's saying, Father, he's just pouring out his heart. Father, you look so small here. Father, you look insignificant here. What's going on? What's going on? And Father spoke to him. And he said, all power and all authority is given to me. I'm just looking for somebody to use. If you look across San Diego, the influence of the kingdom of God is very small, and it irritates me. And I ask myself, Father, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? Getting a hold of the authority that we've been given, the authority that we've been given to go and conquest, to do the works of the, of the kingdom of God. That's what this is about. That's what this is about. This is what has got to be your mindset. This is what's got to be in your heart. If you don't recognize that there's a battle going on, if you don't recognize that there is, there is a need for authority, this is just going to be me talking to you. So I want, to get, I want you to get a hold of this. There is a need for somebody in the earth to have authority. I want you to say, there is a need, is a need for, me for me to have the authority of the kingdom. Jesus clearly showed us what it is that the kingdom of God is and what it is that the kingdom of God does. We destroy everything of darkness. We defeat Satan at every point. He showed us the power of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 and 19. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. When we'll, be, when we'll get a hold of this, when, we'll be, when, we, when we will be able or be willing, I should say, to let the Holy Spirit communicate us, uh, to us, the entirety of the kingdom of God is backing us up. It becomes so easy. 
You don't look to yourself. You don't look to your own ability. You have the entirety of the kingdom of God, the entirety of the kingdom of heaven backing you up. This is what he wants. He's looking for somebody to go and to be on the war path, to be on a mission to conquer the earth. Start with what God has placed in your hands. Okay? Because I, I say, go and conquer the earth. He, Jesus said, go everywhere. Right? Teach all nations. You think, okay, yeah, cool. All nations. That's a great idea. Well, how are you going to get from the point you're at now of teaching no one to teaching all nations? Okay? Start where you're at. You're laying out a map. You got point A, where you are. Point B, all nations. Okay? There's a lot of steps in between. Start laying out goals. Start laying out visions. Let Father stir this up in your heart. Say, okay, Father, I want to do this. Okay, because here's what you got to do tonight. This is what you signed up for, whether you realize it or not. When you walked in the door, you signed up to be a participator. You can't just be a hearer. You got to be a doer. Okay? Look, whether you do it on a big level, whether you do it on a small level, whatever, do something. Okay? So ask yourself, all right, I got tomorrow, Monday morning. Where is my nation? How can I put this into practice? Because you got to put it into practice. If you don't start engaging in it, you're not going to, A, even recognize you need authority, and B, you're going to think you've got all crazy sorts of authority and you don't have anything. Okay? So the revelation when you start engaging. Okay? So I said all that to say, where are you at? Who are you going to encounter tomorrow? Who are you going to see? Where is it that you can start demonstrating? Where is it that you can start participating with this, this authority of the kingdom, this authority to go and make disciples out of your neighbor, out of your coworker, out of a family member, whoever it is you encounter, be the answer. Now, when you receive this from heaven, it becomes, it becomes just, it's, it's all you think about, it's all you live for. But for too long, we've been engaged with our own cares. It's going to work, to do the job, to do whatever, to go home and repeat, Right? Got to have a mindset change. What did, what did Jesus tell us? Hey, you better think differently about yourself. You better have a complete shift in the way you think. Okay? This is good. Is this helping anybody? You want to be a participant in the kingdom of God. Because guess what? His kingdom is the everlasting kingdom. His kingdom is the only kingdom that will remain. I want to be part of his kingdom. Okay? So I better start participating now. Participate now in his kingdom so you can be a part of his eternal kingdom. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to look at Colossians 1.13. Authority comes, comes down to knowing that when you speak the word, when you speak those things that God has put in your mouth, it must be obeyed. It's easy to not really hold yourself or hold those things that you speak out accountable. This is what I mean by that. You say something and uh, whether it happens or not, it's like you're indifferent about it. Okay? Okay? There's a, a lot of people, I mean, this is kind of a practical example. They're parents, and they say, go clean your room. And it's kind of like a, a coin toss, right? Well, maybe they will, maybe they won't, all right? So there's not a whole lot of authority behind it. You might ask for something. You might, hey, maybe you even have a prayer, and it's like, okay, well, I'll pray this out, but the words, what, you know, I don't really know if it's going to happen. If my dad told me to clean my room, I guarantee you my room was cleaned. There was authority behind it. Okay? We need to understand that we don't want to just speak and say things and, oh, maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. Prayers, oh, maybe God will do it, maybe he won't. There's got to be an authority, knowing a confidence that Father is there with the entirety of the kingdom to back it up. Speak out the word with authority. Jesus gave us examples of faith. He gave us examples of what authority looked like. You want to understand those. You want to study those and get a hold of that. To speak with authority is a radical thing. To speak by the Holy Ghost, there's authority behind that. Authority comes down knowing that when you speak, your word must be obeyed. Jesus knew when he addressed sickness, he, when he addressed a demon spirit, 
when he addressed somebody, there was no other option. His word would be obeyed. Amen? We need to understand that when we speak on Jesus' behalf, when we will speak his word, it must be obeyed. And that's where you stand. That's where you begin to engage in the fight, in the battle of, okay, this is the word that God has given me to speak. It must be obeyed. It must be obeyed. That's where you have that mountain moving faith kick in, where you begin to you speak to the mountain, and the mountain's not moving. You speak to it. You speak grace, grace, and you stand in that knowing that your word must be obeyed. That is a place of authority. That is a realm of authority that we want to get a hold of. Thank you, Father. So Colossians 1.13 who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of the dear son. The revelation of the kingdom is another topic, is another kind of uh, bullet point that goes through through, for, for the authority of the kingdom chapter. The revelation of the kingdom. God has shown forth and proven his kingdom. It's been established. He showed, like I said earlier, that throughout the Old Testament, he showed the men of old. He said, this is my kingdom. This is what's been established. This is, his, this is how history is written, right? God has a plan from, from A to Z. It's already established. His kingdom is established. Does everyone understand that? God's, he's established his kingdom. This is the, the right kingdom that you want to be in. Okay? So the revelation of knowing what is God's kingdom, what does it look like, how do we fit in, how do we participate with that, that revelation brought to you by the Holy Ghost so that you can then be the member that he has called you to be, the citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is the testament of the gospel of the kingdom. He's the word. He's the message. Jesus came down as the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus was brought forth to bring redemption so that the kingdom could be completed, established on the earth. Adam's transgression messed things up, messed up the the kingdom operation, but Jesus came as the gospel, as the message, as the word as the king of the kingdom. Turn to Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness, all manner of disease among the people. Jesus taught the word and preached, and he proved the word with power. Jesus told everyone everywhere, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is the message that was preached. The kingdom of heaven is here. He fulfilled the kingdom. Now we have to, with that same authority that Jesus preached with, because he's now commissioned us, right? That's what we opened up with. He said, go, you now preach. We preach, repent. The kingdom of God is here. We speak his word. And with the authority of the kingdom, we then demonstrate with power, with signs, with wonders. We cannot get stuck speaking our own ideas and doctrines and lose sight of the ministry of Jesus. Because Jesus ministered with great power. Too often, it's just a word spoken. I'm sure, I don't know how many... Messages went out today, but Sunday morning across the U.S., you can probably bet there was a pretty good amount of messages that were spoken, sermons, church meetings that were held. I wonder how many of those were the Word of God demonstrated with power. How many of those were preached as Jesus would have preached them? I would be willing to bet not a whole lot. Why is that? Because we've settled out. We haven't understood the authority that is needed. We haven't engaged in the battle for men's souls to see a demonstration of the Holy Ghost in power. It becomes, it becomes ideas, doctrines, philosophies, and all we do is we just talk about it and we pat each other on the back and, oh, cool, yep, that's what I believe. That's not what Jesus did. And we have to recognize our mission in life. I have a purpose. God has given us an invitation to change the culture. That's something that I've been talking a lot with the youth about. We are going to be a part of changing culture. That's radical. That's radical to change a culture, to have it established in this group and in our influence. And as the Father sends us out, a a different culture. Because there's a mindset, there's a way that men walk. There's a way that seems right into a man. The end thereof is death. 
we have got to make sure we are honestly looking at the Word of God. We are honestly asking, honestly asking ourselves, what is it that the kingdom of God should look like? What does the Word tell us? The kingdom, it's righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. All of these things that have been laid out, the ministry to, to communicate the kingdom authority. It's a big task. Look, there's a lot of material to cover. Okay? We have a big job ahead of us. Praise God for the Holy Ghost. Praise God for the Holy Ghost to be there for the authority to, rem to remind us of these things. We're going to get into that one, the authority of the Spirit. That one's a little bit farther down the, down the list. Okay, but I want you guys to get a hold of this. I want you to be, look, one of the things that, that I do, and I'll just tell, tell you this, maybe it'll help somebody, maybe it won't. I, I like to picture myself in the moment, okay, because I'm hearing the word go forth. I want to have action. I hate talking just to talk. It bugs me when people just ramble on and it's like, oh, this stuff, it's like, give me a, anyways, I want to see, I want to see where I can apply it. I want, I want to see where is it that I can start implementing this, okay? So I'll start thinking, all right, well, I've got this, I've got this concept, Father, that you're, you're, you're stirring up in my heart. You're speaking to me these words. How is it that I can now begin to find myself participating with the kingdom? I want to encourage you guys, do that. Ask yourself, Father, where is it that I'm participating? Where is it that I am engaging? Because as you do, your hunger will grow. You realize how little you have. You realize how needy you are. That's the first thing, learning to be needy. Recognizing, I need. Father, I need you. Father, I need you. We want to need the Father like never before. And it's so cool because that need will then inspire. That need will then demand an increase. I want to see the glory of God revealed in this place in a radical, radical way. I love the church. I have been raised in church, and I love it. I love the presence of God. My heart, my passion is to see the glory of God established, revealed, increased in his church. First and foremost, because that's where I get to interact, well, one of the places, right? There's something about, Josh and I were talking about this today, there's something about being in the corporate body being in this church, to be able to participate with him. Obviously, there's the personal one-on-one -on -one relationship, but the church, the establishment that God laid out, what he ordained in his church, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. We want to participate. So I'm saying all of those things to say, if you be hungry, if you be needy, come in with that, with that desire, the level is going to increase. It's going to increase. I've been telling the youth this. I have purposed this year to see exponential growth in my life. I want to grow more this year than I have in my entire Christian walk. Now, I can keep saying that, but if I don't implement it, if I don't have areas in my life where I can start practicing that, it's just going to be words, and it's going to be, you know, into December before I know it, and nothing's going to have changed. We want to see radical growth. I loved when Pastor Mark said this at the beginning of the year. Supernatural, rapid growth is what he said. Miraculous, rapid growth. Rapid growth, rapid growth, okay? There's certain things that you can give to vegetables and trees and all sorts of different things. You can see rapid growth. Give them an extra boost of nutrients. Rapid growth, rapid growth in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. John 15, 16. Let's go look at that one. Jesus tells us to bring forth fruit and fruit that remains. If we're going to bring forth fruit, we must do what Jesus did. Let me read this here. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should bring forth fruit and fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Having that as a goal, having that as a purpose to bring forth fruit in our own life. There's so many different fruits. There's so many things that the Holy Spirit has purposed for us to bring forth. Pick some. Just start somewhere. Bring forth fruit and fruit that remains. 
Let's jump over, actually one page back, John 14, 16 through 17. This is going to start to get into the next section, which is the authority of the Spirit, the authority of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. John 14, 16 to 17. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that ye may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it has seen him not, neither knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you, and he shall be with you. Let's uh, jump down to verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. This is beautiful, the authority of the Spirit, the authority of the Holy Ghost. One of the things, I mean, I know for me, one of the most challenging things, if, if I'm going up to minister, a lot of times I can recognize a need, I can see a need in a person's life, but I'm just like, okay, well, I don't know what to say. Okay, and then you start thinking it through. Don't, don't reason it out. Don't try to figure it out. Go, begin to move, because this is what happens every time. And it's funny, I forget it. But you see the need, and then it's like, okay, go. And just engage and just lock in on it. And every single time, the Holy Spirit's never let me down. Every single time I've gotten there, there's been the word. He brings it. He quickens it. He, he brings it to my remembrance. He gives me that next step. Okay? The authority of the Holy Spirit. Jesus came, demonstrated, he established, fulfilled the kingdom, and then he said, okay, i got to go away. I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost. There is, a, there is a level of authority that is communicated by the Spirit of God. Amazing, absolutely amazing to get a hold of that, to understand what the Holy Spirit is doing, what the Holy Spirit does. You don't ever have to worry about not knowing what to do, not knowing what to say. He speaks out with clear authority. The Holy Spirit doesn't stutter. The Holy Spirit speaks out those things that need to be said. He gives us confidence, boldness, and assurance. The Holy Spirit knows exactly what to say. All you have to be willing to do is yield your members. Let him speak through you. Jesus is the baptizer. Jesus sent the Holy Ghost. He sent the Holy Spirit so that we could be baptized. Jesus was our first example. He is the one, he was the first to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, first to receive it. Then Jesus released the gifts of the Holy Spirit on the redeemed. We now have the authority of the Spirit to do the ministry of Jesus. What did Jesus tell the disciples? Go wait, go on away, go wait. For the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And what did they do? They went and they waited and they received the Holy Spirit. And with that, they received this authority. They received a new level, a new, it's like a level up, right? Jesus had commissioned them because they had already started participating with it. They went out. The disciples went and they were doing the work of, of the ministry, right? Jesus sent them to do it. But then he said, all right, now you got to go wait. And there's this new revelation that they get. There's this new authority that they get, the authority of the Spirit. Acts 1, 5. Jesus was talking about it, right? Acts 1, 5. He's, uh, he's going he's gonna to tell them about it right here. He's going to tell them what to expect. For John truly baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not, days, not many days hence. We are co-inheritors in the unlimited gift. Jesus showed us exactly how to live, how to walk just like him, how to have complete authority over everything in the world. He makes it so easy. He makes it so easy. It's awesome because it's, it's funny. You get into it and you start thinking about this stuff and you're like, oh man, there's a lot to deal with. There's a lot to think through. How do I do it? And then it just, you just go back to the word. It's, the answer has already been given. Jesus made it so simple. We don't even have to come up with the words to say. All we do is we speak his word. We just do it like he did. Okay? It's one of the easiest things to do. Right? It's like one of the, the lowest cognitive skills. Right? Just, just imitate. Okay? Right? You read something and then you just repeat it back. God made it pretty easy for us. Praise God. You don't have to have a lot of intelligence. Praise God, it doesn't take a lot. Just do what he did. Just do what he did. And understand that he's there to empower it. And then let's look at Galatians 4, 6. This is radical. I love this because now we're talking about God dwelling in us. Talk about the authority. 
recognizing when that, that, yeah, God is in me. Whatever I speak, I'm just speaking the word of God. It will be done. Galatians 4, 6. And because you're sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, you are no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, an heir of God through Christ. Jesus knew exactly who he was. He knew what he was supposed to be doing. He knew the authority that he had, and he went and he executed him. He now, he now says to us, you are the sons. You guys, you've been brought in. Go and do it. Go and do it. He gives us the strength to walk by the Spirit. To walk in His authority, we must be strengthened by the Spirit. Ephesians 3.16, that He would grant to you, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. This takes strength. This takes a strengthening. Colossians 1.11, strengthened with all might, according to His glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. It's easy to get burdened down. It's easy to get consumed with the things that are taking place. You know, life goes on. Life happens. You got to have a place where you are looking to the Holy Spirit for strength. And this is great. This is the next point that comes out in the authority, the utterance of the Spirit. Jude tells us to build ourselves up, to be strengthened in our inner man. The authority of the utterance of the Spirit is a radical thing. To be able, what it will, what first and foremost, let me just tell you what the utterance of the Spirit is. The outpouring of the Holy Ghost with the, with the gift of tongues. The baptism of fire, right? That's what it looked like on the day of Pentecost. Now that's the initial gift. The utterance of the Spirit increased, right? The words of wisdom, words of knowledge, prophecies. These are all utterances of the Spirit. And you know that it's not something by you that you're coming up with mentally. These are the, this is what the Holy Spirit is communicating. Has anyone ever given a word, God's placed something in your heart, you, you know, yep, I just spoke on behalf of God? Anybody? Cool, right? There wasn't a lot of intimidation there. You, you pretty much knew God just gave you this word to speak, and you spoke it out. There was authority that backed it up, guaranteed. If it was, in fact, outpouring of the Holy Ghost and utterance of the Spirit, it's always there. Listen to messages. Listen. This is something that you can practice, too. Here's a little side note. Finding people that minister by the Spirit, that speak by the Spirit, that flow in words of wisdom, words of knowledge, prophecy, tongues. Listen to them pray. Listen to them minister. There's not intimidation there. There's usually not too much stuttering or, or waffling. It's very direct. It's very authoritative. It's an utterance of the Spirit. Okay? There is an authority behind it. You want to get, you want to get desperate to understand these things. You want to get desperate to learn how to move with the Holy Spirit, so then you can participate, right? If you're going to participate, you got to know what you're be, what you're doing, okay? Because if you just want to participate, if you got a team sport going, and everybody's got their positions, and then there's some Joe bag of donuts that runs on the field that wants to participate, he's just going to mess the whole thing up. He's like, I want to do it, I want to do it. Well, okay, you don't know what your role is. You got to know what your role is if you're going to participate. Know what your role is, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so how are you going to know that? How are you going to make sure that you are participating correctly? You better be doing it by the Spirit, walking by the Word. This is a, yeah, this is your playbook right here. This is exactly how, how you're supposed to run it. This is how you're supposed to do it, the Word. We're going to get into that. That's another one. The authority of the Word, that's a good one. Christ Jesus, the Word. God has given us the language of the, of the Spirit, the authority to speak into the atmosphere and command circumstances to obey. That's pretty radical to think about. It's pretty radical to have the authority to change whatever's going on. The diversities of tongues, the interpretation of tongues, the vocal gift, and the utterances of the Spirit, they're beautiful. They communicate what God is wanting to speak. There's a lot of times that Pastor Mark hears things or he'll see things, other men of God, and I don't hear it, I don't see it, and I'm, you know, I'm, I want to, I want to see it, but it's cool that they're speaking it out, right? Because we get a benefit from it. It's an utterance of the Spirit. So we might not see it, we might not hear it as it directly comes out of, of the realms of the Spirit, but it's communicated through 
the oracle of God, the mouthpiece, right? So you want to be able to grab a hold of that and recognize the utterances of the Spirit. Because if you will, you then get a hold of that authority. You'll be able to hook up with it because it's a river. Pastor Mark has talked to us about this many times, the flow, how to flow in the river, how to get in that same stream. I love the example that he gives about um, praying in the Spirit. And it was a, a living example for me, and it's, it was cool to watch. There's ministers that would come in, and they'd begin to pray in tongues. They'd begin to pray in the Spirit, and he would immediately hook up with that prayer, and it would sound the same. And the first couple times, I was like, wow, that's pretty wild. The Holy Ghost is, is praying. There's no reason we can't hook up. And this is a great practical point. You want to participate? Listen. Listen to the tongues that are going forth. There's some people in here, I know you're already good at this. There's some people that you have no idea what I'm talking about. Okay? Listen to tongues that are going forth. Listen for the diversity of tongues, because Pastor Mark exemplifies diversities of tongues. Get in that flow. Get in that flow, because sometimes it's easy to just, all right, we're playing in tongues, I've got my tongue, and I'm going to do my, my thing. That's not really helping. It's like singing a, it's like having a choir ready to sing and they've all rehearsed and then you're going to come in and you're going to sing your song. It doesn't fit. It's out of key. It doesn't work, okay? So this is something you can practice. How many people would be willing to practice that? Cool. How many people would, you need an example or you have an idea of how you could practice that? Okay, so the body is willing, of the, no, the spirit is willing, the body is weak. I'll give you an example. Grab a tape, man. Just get a tape, okay? There's, been, there's plenty of altar music. There's pl plenty of uh, Pastor Mark praying in the Spirit. Pray along with it. Practice. There's prayer that goes on before service. There's people that have given themselves to prayer. There's a good flow. Listen to it. Participate with it, okay? Do it. If you get a hold of that, what I just told you right now, you will grow leaps and bounds, okay? How many, uh, I won't ask that. Let me say it like this. Uh, there are many who I've heard pray the same tongue for many years. Not necessarily anything bad with it, but it's pretty shallow. It's pretty weak. Okay? The Holy Spirit wants to take you to another realm. He wants to take you to another level with it. There's an increased authority. There's an increased manifestation with it. He wants to communicate things on a greater level. But if you're happy praying in the tongue that you that was like your first God is like it's I mean it's baby language baby language is cute for a little while right when Anna would make just any little blurbs it was like oh isn't that amazing okay now we expect a little bit more out of her okay we need you to enunciate you need to start talking clearer right why because she's gonna grow if she was sitting up here 13 14 years old still talking like a baby we would think she had some serious problems okay Across the board, you can think of many examples. We as Christians, the spiritual development, the spiritual maturity, we put it on hold a lot of times. There's many people been walking with God for a long time. Bless your heart. You still are talking like a baby. All right? Now, just there's no condemnation. God still loves you. We still love you. You're awesome. What I'm talking to, about tonight is a, is a realm of authority. What I'm talking about tonight is saying, hey, what you're doing needs to change because what we are able to effectively do for the kingdom of God simply is not enough. And I ask you, are you willing to participate with you with it? And I know you guys are. What I want to do, the reason I'm saying all of this is to say, I saw all your hands go up when I said, how many of you guys want to increase in this? You want to participate with it? You, everybody raise their hand, okay? So does that make sense? I know I just said a lot of things. Listen to, to people that are, there's a depth in it. How many of you guys, you can recognize the difference between someone who's got a shallow tongue and someone who's got a deep tongue, okay? There's a diversity of it. It feels different, okay? Some, there's a river. There's a depth to it. It's like digging deep wells. Digging a deep well is not an easy thing, okay? If you're on the beach and you take a shovel full of sand, you're going to have water pretty quick, okay? If you're out somewhere and you want to really get good water, you got to go down. You got to drill. You got to labor. You got to labor for it. These realms are accessible. These waterways of the Spirit are accessible, but you got to labor. You got to give yourself to it. The cool thing is, once you hit that realm, once you tap into that, man, it's fun. It's a flow. It's a flow, and you always have that. You, you're able to access that. 
Okay, what I want to do is stir up faith in your heart. What I want to do is get you excited by the word of God. When you hear these things, to say, yeah, you know what? That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. Because look, you can look around you. You can turn on Christian television. You can listen to Christian radio. And you can try to find somebody that has a depth in prayer. There is a serious deficiency. There is a serious deficiency. Look back just 30 years. The intercessors. The men and women who gave themselves to prayer. Mountain moving prayer. I mean, these guys, when they, when they got down on their knees, things in the spirit shifted. Intense stuff. Intense stuff. I mean, wars that would have taken place. Deaths that would have happened. Otherwise, they got down on their knees and they had a, a prayer. They had touched a realm of heaven, an intercession of heaven, where they could change the course of history. That's radical. That's radical. Okay, so this is a little bit of a tangent, but it's important because there's very few people that have been willing to give themselves to prayer. It's a good realm to give yourself to. There's an authority that is in that realm of prayer. There's an authority in that utterance of the Spirit. Find ways that you can start practically implementing that. If you have a prayer time, that's good. It's essential. Take it deeper. See it grow. If this year is really going to be a year of exponential growth for you, What does it look like at the end of the year? What do you want your prayer to sound like? What do you want to have communicated when you speak it out? I've asked the Father, Father, when I speak, I want to speak on your behalf. I want to feel the atmosphere change. I've got a long way to go, but there's things I'm doing, things that I'm giving myself to so that it happens. So all I'm saying is, hey, we're in this together. We, the body only functions when every member participates, okay? So I'm, I'm saying these things to encourage you. Find an area. Find an area. Just here. Here's an easy way to do it. What do you get passionate about? When I read through the scriptures, when I'm reading through the gospels, I'll look and I'll say, what is it that, that excites me? What is it that's, you know, that, it's cool, right? So, oh, man, the, the blind eyes being open. Maybe you're like super excited about seeing blind eyes open. Just get a hold of that. Pick something. If it's prayer. Get a hold of that. Yeah, I, I, I want to get a hold of that. That's exciting. That, that stirs something up in me. I mean, because you look at the diversities of gift that have been given, you look at the ministries across the world, there's, it's almost like specialties, right? There's certain realms that they know they're going to get a hold uh, of a certain person that is blind or deaf or whatever. They pray for them. It's going to happen, okay? What is it that, is, that you're passionate about? What is it that is exciting to you? Grab a hold of that and press in. Engage in that. Okay, it's got to be real to you. You can only talk about those things that are real to you. You can only effectively communicate the things that you know that are real to you. Does that make sense? You want to get a hold of the things of the kingdom of God and they be so real to you that they, that they drive, that they touch every one of your deepest passions, your deepest emotions, that nothing else can touch you like that, that nothing else will stir up that passion. I'll tell you what, I, I just, I've been blessed. I don't know if you guys have recognized it, but Pastor Mark's a, a fairly passionate person. Okay? He's modeled it. There, there is nothing. I've lived with the guy. I'll tell you this. There is nothing, nothing he's more passionate about than the things of the kingdom. When we work, you would think he might be more passionate about that, but he's not. He gets fired up. He's just a fiery guy. It's cool. It, stir, it stirs me up. I mean, I'll tell you what. I don't know. I, I'm sorry if maybe you're a little jealous. I don't know how I got so blessed. I am, I'll tell you this, I am who I am today in God because of my dad, because of the man that he is, the, for the example, the passion. It's just whatever we did, whatever, it didn't matter. It was going to be, it was going to be passionate. You're going to put your heart into it. You're not going to go half measure with it, okay? And it was great because when it came to the things of the spirit, it was the most passionate. And we saw that. Parents, do that for your kids, Okay? I didn't ever have to wonder if, if dad really believed what he was talking about. If he really believed the things that were going on in church. He lived it. Get passionate about it, okay? Each and every one of you that's old enough to understand what I'm speaking right now, be so passionate about the things of the kingdom. It's essential to be desperate. What did, what did the psalmist say? He said, you better pant after this. You better be so desperate for this like a person in a dry and a thirsty land where there's no water. You're so thirsty. That's the person that's going to that's gonna receive. All right? So stir yourself up. The Holy Spirit's really the only one that can access the passion. He's really the only one that can, that can that it's like you get a flip 
this, a switch flipped in here and you're like, you just get fired up about it, okay? Some of the youth guys have been exploring with them what gets them fired up, what gets you passionate, what is it that you're excited about? Some of them, at this point, I think the only thing that's going to get excited or get them excited is to drop a brick on their foot, okay? Hey, but at some point, I'm going to find out what gets you fired up, okay? You need to ask yourself, what is it that gets me excited? What is it that causes a yell, that causes an excitement, that causes some sort of expression, okay? Because God does not do anything without radical displays of emotion and passion. It's just who he is. It's who he is. Okay? Is this helping you? Get radical about the things of God. Get passionate about the things of God. It's fun. It's a joy. There's no, no greater joy. There should be nothing that can touch you like the presence of God. Nothing that can touch you like the Lord Jesus. If there is, you need to be reading Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. You need to learn how to deny yourself. You need to get hungry for the things of God. Moving on. Mark 1.8. Did I read that one? Yeah, Mark 1.8. Let's go there. It's an it's a echo of what we, just, what we just read. Jesus telling us how John baptized with water, but Jesus baptizing with the Holy Ghost. Let's go read that, Mark 1.8. Mark 1.8. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Everything Jesus did was by the Holy Ghost. The utterances of the Holy Ghost and the movings of the Holy Ghost, it was the power of Jesus' ministry. If Jesus relied on the Holy Ghost, you better believe we need to. Becoming so dependent on the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential to this realm of authority that I'm talking about. Finding complete abandonment of yourself, finding that you and of yourself, you can do nothing. But with the Holy Ghost, you got it all. The Holy Ghost, he speaks and things happen. He speaks and the results come. That's the realm of the authority. The, the realm of the authority of the Spirit. To do nothing of yourself, but look to him for everything that you need. And the greater works come. The greater works that Jesus talked about. John chapter 12, excuse me, John chapter 14, verse 12. These works which I do, shall you do in greater works than these, because I go to my Father. Jesus set us up for success. He showed us exactly how to do it. And he said, go even farther than I did. Do even more. It's, it's, it's the, the model of the father and the son. The father laid it out. Jesus came to the earth, lived out the life. And then he empowered us and said, go even farther. Do even more. Is this cool? I've gotten to live this out too. My dad has done awesome, amazing things. And he's, many of the things, just handed off. He said, all right, you go farther. Take it farther. Do even more. It's an empowerment. It's a blessing. It's motivating, right? It's humbling to think about Jesus coming, paving the way, doing everything for us, doing all the work. He did all the hard stuff. Now he just says, you go, do even more. Go do even more. How radical is that? Gives us all the authority. Gives us everything that we needed. All the infrastructure set up. So you just go do it. You go do even more, even greater. Man, that's exciting to me. That's exciting. It's all there. It's, I mean, it's, he conquered the world, right? Right? Jesus came and he conquered everything. He said, all you got to do, you just go claim it now. Just go claim it. I've already conquered it. The work's done. All you have to do is go on my behalf and just claim it. Identify places, people, whoever it is, family members, friends. You're just going to go claim it. You're going to claim it. That's all you have to do. With the authority of heaven, with the authority of Jesus Christ, the authority of the kingdom, the authority of the spirit, you go and you claim it. And stand, because it is a fight. I know there's many, I have many friends, many people. There's even family members I have. I do not see the result yet, but I've claimed it. I've claimed it. And I know that I have the authority of heaven backing me up. And what I ask, I know the Father will do. Because he dwells in me and I dwell in him. And it's a great relationship. It 
Let's go look at Colossians 1.16. Before I go, I wrote a note here. I, I want to I want to read, bouncing back to just something I was just saying about passion. I was praying. I was asking the Lord, Father, what is and how do we tap into the capacities of passion? Just thinking about this, you know, because there's people in in my life, people that I know, they're just they. It's hard to find the areas that they're passionate about. Are they a passionate person? What is it that gets them gets them excited? And asking the Father, how passionate am I? Father, what is, it that I'm, what is it that I need to get more passionate about? And looking at the areas, identifying areas in our lives where our capacity, our passion capacity is what I was, you know, what I was just kind of thinking along, along those lines. How do we expand that? How do we, how do we take that deeper? And what he spoke to me was that you can only be passionate about the things that you know are real. You can only really get a hold of the things that you know, that you know about, that you've experienced. The Father wants to reveal himself to us where he's all we know. The Lord Jesus wants to be all that we know. The Holy Spirit wants to be all that we know. That is truth. That is reality. There's no deception in the word. He is the only truth. If you've got a hold of something else that, you're, that, that you think is, is a fact or truth, it better line up with the word. Better line up with the word because you want your passions to be in the word of God. Let me encourage you tonight. Ask yourself, reflect, what is it that you feel your passion capacity is? What is it that really excites you about the kingdom of God? What is it that you're giving yourself to? What is it that's real to you? See that increase. We can. Is there anybody that has the epitome of, of passion, of, of the, the example, the ultimate? No. It's a, it's a broad, broad depth. Broad, broad depth? It's a deep, deep depth. It's a broad, broad thing. It's infinite. There's a deeper level. There's a deeper level of the joy. There's a deeper level of, of the love. There's a deeper level of these expressions of the Holy Ghost, the passion that's behind that, the infinite depth of it. Get a hold of that. All right, Colossians 1.16. We're going to start talking a little bit about the authority of the word. Oh, I was getting kind of late on this, huh? We're good. The authority of the word. The word of God is the expression of all divine authority. The word of God possesses all creative power. It's wild to think about. Wild to think about. Colossians 1.16. Is everybody there? For by him... Were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether by they, they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. The power and the authority of the word communicates healing. Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. Jesus is the word. And there's so many different uh, aspects of this that we're going to continue to go through that Jesus represents, that Jesus is, this authority that is in Jesus. Matthew 8, verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant will be healed. Just speak the word. Jesus was the word and is the word made manifest. The authority of that word, the authority to just speak his word, the authority to speak what Jesus spoke. Just repeat it. It's easy. Doesn't get any simpler than that. Just repeat. 1 Thessalonians 2.13. For this cause also, thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually works also in you that believe. Everything that we know about the Father is revealed in his word. To function in his authority, we must believe the words that he's spoken. When we speak his word, he confirms it. He's so faithful. He's so faithful to, to, to always be there. All we have to do is speak his word with the authority, knowing that we're speaking on his behalf, 
He's there. He's there. He upholds his word. His word's very important. He's there always to confirm it. We read this one again, but I want to reference it. Mark 16, 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. God is committed to proving his word. He's committed to doing it. No matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, if we will take a hold of the authority that God has given us in his word, he will be there to confirm it. Acts chapter 14, verse 3. Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders be done by their hands. It's so beautiful to be able to just know with complete confidence, complete assurity, we speak the word, Father's there. Nothing about us, it's just him. We speak his word, he's there to do it. We're going to get in now just a little bit to the authority of the name of Jesus. Look at Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus showed us there was nothing in this world that wasn't under his authority. He proved his power over every sin, sickness, disease, and over the elements. And he has commanded us to do the same thing. To go on his behalf with the authority of his word to speak it out. When Jesus was crucified and resurrected, he he stepped in to an even greater realm of authority. So think about this. Jesus came. He had complete authority over everything. Right? The sin, sickness, disease, the elements, lived out the life, was crucified, buried, raised up, ascended up on high, and that realm of authority, that level of authority he had, was taken to another level. It's pretty pretty intense to think about. Like you have all, all authority. There's a whole new realm outpours the Holy Spirit on us. Is there anything too hard for Jesus? There's nothing. Is there, any, is there any power that can withstand him? There's nothing. He has all authority, and he's given us that authority. If we'll get a hold of this, I'm going to keep saying it. You'll probably hear me say it 100,000 100, times. I don't know. Get a hold of this realm of authority and start living out the life of Christ Jesus. We, as his representative, have his name to go everywhere executing his authority on the earth. If we will be dedicated to making his purposes our purposes in our lives, we'll see radical results. We'll see amazing things take place. We'll truly be able to live the life of Jesus Christ, to see the glory of heaven poured out, revival poured out, the demonstration of power, to see a culture change, to see hundreds of thousands, millions of souls brought into the kingdom because we will then be executing Jesus' authority, executing Jesus' will. All we have to do is come, grab a hold of this level, this realm of authority that he's given. Jesus has given his own name. He said to us, go everywhere in my name, preach, speak out my name. It's the authority that is in that name. All power, all dominion is given in that precious name, the name of Jesus. I want to look at Colossians Before I go there, let me say this. If there's one thing you want to give your life to, if there's one thing you want to really get get a hold of, it's the life of Christ. Keeping things in an eternal perspective is absolutely essential. Always keeping the word of God before you. Realizing that God's not going to be impressed with what you did in your job. He's not going to be impressed with what you did on your basketball league. He doesn't care how many touchdowns you scored in high school. He cares about what you did. For the kingdom. Keeping eternal perspective is absolutely essential. 
because it's so easy to get caught up in our day-to-day lives. What is it that we're accomplishing? What is it that we're doing? What car are we driving? Where, what are we living? What, you know, what clothes are we wearing? Where are the kids going to school? What's the retirement plan? It has no significance, no significance at all. If you will just step back from it and look at things with an eternal perspective, where does this line up on a timeline of eternity? changes the way you think. It changes the way you live. And this is absolutely essential to being able to get hungry and desperate for the authority realms, the authority that we've been given as the believers, so that nothing is impossible. Colossians 1.20. We're going to talk about the authority of the blood of Jesus. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now has he reconciled in the body of his flesh, and, uh, by the body, excuse me, in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. You have to know that you have a right to be in his presence. You have to know that you have a right to be his representative. You have to know that you have a right to be his son. The blood of Jesus is absolutely essential to that. Knowing that you've been washed, that you've been redeemed, that you are now an heir, joint heir, a son of the living God. That is all wrapped up in the authority that we have in the blood of Jesus. Knowing that sin no longer separates us. There's no longer a disjoint. There's no longer a veil, right? We now have access to the holies of holies by the blood of Jesus Christ. We've been washed. We've been cleansed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And with that, you get a hold of this, this authority that is in the blood, this authority in the blood, because that really, you, you, you get a hold of your identity. You know who you are. You know who Jesus is to you, and you know who you are to him. That's, that's where it's at. I know what the blood of Jesus has done for me, so I can now walk in a place of absolute authority, knowing the power of his blood. The authority of the covenant that then comes out of that. John 1, 2. Excuse me, John 1, 12. But as many as received him to get to as many as received him to them, he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. We have all the rights of the kingdom because of this covenant that we've entered into. Look at the, fa- look at the, the model that the Father laid out, this relationship of the Father and the Son. It just typifies this depth of love. It's, that's what God chose to communicate, what God chose to, to show it out. This is, this is like the ultimate relationship right here, the Father and the Son. You can look across the world today. There's not a lot of sons that have good relationships with their fathers. Satan hates it. He fights it. But if we get a hold, it doesn't matter if you're male or female. We're in Christ. We are the son, God's sons, right? This relationship that we now have with him, this covenant that he's established by his blood. There is a level of authority in that. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Just get a hold of your identity as a son of God. And recognize the authority that is there. Let's look at Romans 8.19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. The earth, earth is desperately looking where the sons of God The revelation of the sons of God. We're here. Now it's time to live it out. Understand the authority that you have as a son. Understand the authority that you've been given and live it out. Don't have an identity crisis. Know who you are every single day. The son of the almighty God. It'll bless the father and it'll bless you. Know your identity. Matthew chapter 17 verse 20. We're going to get into the the authority of faith. Matthew 17, verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, 
If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say into this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Faith is the supernatural authority released through those who believe. Faith produces miracles. The simplest acts of obedience result in the greatest miracles. The greatest miracles of faith. The authority of faith allows us to realize nothing is impossible. It's a wonderful realm. It's a wonderful place to live where we know we can do whatever the Father asks, everything the Father asks. I'm going to go back to this. This realm of faith, this realm of sonship, this realm of the kingdom, of understanding the Spirit, it's cultivated in a place of prayer. It's cultivated in this relationship. Because I can talk to you all night about this authority, what you've been given. And I can show you even, yep, this is the authority that I've been given by God. But until it becomes real to you, until you get a hold of it, it's just another concept, it's just another idea. Be hungry enough to have authority. Get yourself in sticky situations where you need the authority. And you start getting hungry for it. You start getting desperate for it. I want everybody to stand with me. Have things that you bring before the Father every single day where you ask, where you seek, where you knock, where you petition the Father. Father, this is the thing I need. Father, I bring this before you. For yourself, for your friends, for your loved ones. But the, the most important thing to me is my relationship with Jesus. I'm constantly bringing things. Hey, Father, this is something in my relationship that I need to change. I ask you for help. I ask you for your, your, your miracle. Whatever the case may be, okay? Many examples. Get a hold of this, realizing that this is cultivated in prayer. Passionately lay hold of things in God. Find the things that you're excited about. Find the things that you want to see growth in your life. Lay hold on God. Lay hold on God because we need you. Like I said, pick something. It, it will be useful. Just start engaging. Start asking God, Father, I need to start flowing in. Whatever. Father, I need to increase in. Whatever. Lord Jesus, come and help me now. Lay a hold on the things of God. Be passionate about it. Be absolutely dedicated to living out the life of Christ Jesus. Amen. Father, thank you for your presence. I want everybody to close your eyes, raise your hands. Father, we love you. Lord Jesus, I thank you that tonight you're going to do a mighty work in every life. Father, I thank you for the word that has gone forth. I ask you that you anoint it, that you stir up faith in every heart. Father, that it be received on ears that were ready, hearts that were ready, and that the implementation would be put into play. Father, that, that, that these things would be put into practice, that we would have in this place doers of the word. Lord Jesus, we love you. Father, we do your word. We live your word. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Holy Spirit, thank you that you come and you move in this place. Holy Spirit, come. Let your presence fill this place, oh God. Father, I ask you right now to come and fill this place with the wind of the Spirit. Father, that great demonstrations of your Holy Ghost be poured out. Father, that a fresh baptism of your Holy Ghost in fire be poured out tonight. Father, we are hungry for the movings of your Spirit. Father, your presence. Lord Jesus, we desire only you. Father, I ask you to make us a people that are filled with the prayers of the Spirit. Father, that are filled with the prayers of the Spirit, bringing forth offerings of praise. Father, bringing forth the petitions that you have placed in our mouth and in our heart, that your house would be a house of prayer. Lord Jesus, that every person would recognize the desperate need that we have to continually be in prayer, to be continually seeking after you. 
Volamanda la masih katala vasotto socolamandi revese revese prava vavra mando socupri. Volala la mam revese prava la botto cosa pala masie preve levese preve levese socorum. Zora la lava vavre. Holy Spirit, come and do your work tonight. Holy Spirit, come and move tonight. Lola mazi le lava zapra bacaro mando socupri. Bele le sar. Vela la lomon son toda monzoco tapala vase preve sebra manda pri. Father, make us desperate for you. Father, make us passionate for you. Father, fill our hearts, fill our desires with only the things of the kingdom. Lord Jesus, thank you that you teach us how to recognize ourselves, to deny ourselves, and to take up our cross and follow you. Father, that we would no longer live for ourselves, but we would live for you. Father, for the world around us is in desperate need. The world groans, looking for the sons of God to be revealed. I thank you that you find in us the revelation of your son. Lord Jesus, that we would be your representatives on the earth today. Lord Jesus, that you would find in this place a people that is hungry for you, a people that is set apart, consecrated to live for you. Father, we thank you that your army will arise. Father, we thank you that your troops will mobilize. Father, that we would no longer be satisfied to be stuck in a place of, of what we have done. But Father, we will get desperate to see the outpouring of your Holy Ghost. Like never before, like never before, in Jesus' name. Zota la manzanda la manzik pe la makafri. Bolra bra ma mambra mande se kai lo lo la monso shofri. Bolra ma na mamba bra basat la basiela la la mama se kai la boso togu. Bolra la la basi. Father, I ask you to forgive me for any areas that I have been complacent. Father, I ask you to forgive me for any areas of lukewarmness. Lord Jesus, make me so passionate for you. Lord Jesus, set me on fire. Set me on fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost, to seek after you. Lord Jesus, to consecrate this day, this week, this month, this year, to live for you like we have never lived before. Father, to be your people, to be your representatives. Lord Jesus, we are hungry to see your glory manifested. Father, to see the moving of your spirit. Bozo toro vo sufra, bala mandanda la vasi kaler, zopra, zopra manda masanda la vasi la la vasa prava va vano mondo sotor, besa la 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 va fri, vo soto, vo la macaprazi ke la vasi ri. We love you, Lord Jesus. Father, we lay hold upon these things. Father, we lay hold upon these things. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Vo tata la masi. Bala manga romondo soto la basa prava ba karamanda ze ke la vese la mando soto ramama pri. I want everybody to spend a couple minutes. We're just going to pray for revival in this city. If you haven't recognized it, we need a serious revival, a serious outpouring of the Holy Ghost in this city. And there is nothing that is as powerful as a corporate prayer, as a prayer of agreement. So let's just spend a couple minutes asking for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. There are many things that God would, would have us do. He's looking for us to participate. So, Father, right now, I thank you that you find in this place those who are willing to hook up with your purpose, with your plan, to see a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost and fire upon San Diego. Father, for this is our Jerusalem, and we thank you that you send it to us, send us into the Jerusalem, into the Samaria, and into the uttermost parts of the earth. Father, we need desperately to have the manifestation of the Holy Ghost in power. Use us, Father. Use us, Father, to see the strongholds broken, that every mind-blinding spirit be broken off of this region, 
that everything that has fought against the, the manifest presence of the Lord Jesus, it be broken. Right now, by the authority that is in the name of Jesus, we claim this territory. We claim this region for the kingdom of God. We say, yield up to the kingdom of God. The souls that are in this region, the souls that we encounter every single day, yield up to the kingdom of God. Surrender to the kingdom of God. We lay claim upon this territory. We lay claim upon this region in Jesus' mighty name. Father, make us desperate to see souls saved. Father, make us desperate to see the work of your ministry done on a daily basis. Father, I ask you for divine opportunities for every person this week at work, as they go out to school, wherever, encounters, divine opportunities that you appoint, Father, for them to minister the gospel, for them to be able to put this into practice, to begin to participate with the things that you are desperately desiring to have in your people. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. If there's anybody that has a need, physically, spiritually, financially, come and we'll pray with you. The Holy Spirit will touch you. Father, you're so good. The presence of the Lord Jesus is here. Reverence his presence, honor his presence. It is sacred, it is precious. Every need can be answered here. Everything that you have, bring before the Father. If you don't have a need, if you're just standing out there, I want you to touch heaven. I want you to raise your hands, you close your eyes, you just talk to the Father, worship him. Father, thank you for the atmosphere of faith in this place. Father, thank you that everything that you have purposed to be done will be done in our lives. Father, we look to you to meet the need. Father, we look to you to provide the answer. Radical signs and wonders. Radical demonstration of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Eliana, come up here. Come up here. The Holy Ghost is touching you in a radical way. It's beautiful. Pastor Ruth, come help me pray. Raise your hands. Father, I just thank you for the anointing, the glory of heaven. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
your blood has made the way. Yes, your blood has made the way. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Most of all, we thank you, Jesus, for your blood has made the way. Yes, your blood has made the way. So we thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Heavenly Father, but most of all, we thank you, Jesus, for your blood has made the way. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father, but most of all, we thank you, Jesus, for your blood has made the way. Yes, your blood has made the way. Lord, your blood has made the way. Your blood has made 
your blood has made the way. Lord, your blood has made the way. Yes, we 
thank you, Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Heavenly Father. But most of all, we thank you, Jesus, for your blood has made the way. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Heavenly Father. But most of all, we thank you, Jesus, for your blood has made the way. Yes, your blood has made the way. Lord, your blood has made the way. Father, we thank you for the unlimited authority that you have given to your people so that now nothing would be impossible. Lord Jesus, we are dedicated to living out the life that you have purposed for us to live. We love you and we bless you. We praise you. We thank you for the work that you've done tonight. We thank you for the increase. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We love you, we bless you, we praise you, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Stay, lay, enjoy the presence as long as you want. <clears throat> if you need to go, you're dismissed. Find somebody, hug them, bless them, encourage them in the things of the Lord. Love you guys very much.